So uh, I was playing golf with some of my friends. It was on a Sunday morning. And uh, all of a sudden we heard shots and it sounded like bullets. But what do I know about that? But Secret Service knew immediately it was yeah. bullets. And uh, they grabbed me. Secret Service agent had seen a barrel of a AK-47, which is a very powerful gun. And he ran across the street and grabbed his car. It is a huge relief to us all that nobody was hurt. And I think that many in the crypto community will agree with me when I say that we're here with you, Mr. President, during these trying times. Your unwavering support for our community has gone, not gone unnoticed, and we're immensely grateful for it. And really, the fact that after all of this, you've chosen to proceed with this interview blows my mind. Um, it speaks volume, Mr. President, uh, and thank you for being here tonight. Well, thank you very much, and I appreciate the remarks. It was quite something. But it worked out well, and Secret Service did an excellent job. And uh, they have the man behind bars, and hopefully he's going to be there for a long time. Dangerous person, very, very dangerous person. Uh, but I appreciate the comments very much. Well, I appreciate you for, for allowing me to interview you in, in your wonderful uh, Mar-a-Lago um, home, which is truly an honor, and I'm very grateful for it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, so, Mr. President, um, I can say that Myself, like I was saying, the crypto community and you know, millions of Americans are, are relieved that you're here with us uh, today after the second attempt um, on your life at the Trump National Golf Club. It's just horrifying. Can you run us through what happened? So uh, I was playing golf with some of my friends. It was on a Sunday morning and very peaceful, very beautiful weather. Everything was beautiful. It was a nice place to be. And uh, all of a sudden we heard shots being fired in the air and I guess probably four or five and it sounded like bullets but what do I know about that but Secret Service knew immediately it was yeah. bullets and uh, they grabbed me and uh, I think probably the other one Steve is one of the people Steve Woodcuff a great friend of mine a great uh, great businessman from mostly New York and Florida great businessman and who, more importantly just a fantastic person so we're in the group and uh, everybody just, we got into the carts and we moved along pretty, pretty good. Uh, I was with an agent and the agent did a fantastic job. There was no question that we were off that course. I would have loved to have sank that last putt, <laughs> but uh, we decided, well, let's get out of here. And what the uh, gunfire was actually, interestingly, was a uh, Secret Service agent had seen a barrel of a AK-47, which is a very powerful gun rifle and uh he started shooting at the barrel started shooting in the bushes wow could only see the barrel how good is that right but could only see the barrel based on that he started shooting and uh ran toward the target and was shooting a lot of i mean those were the shots we heard the other one never got a shot off and he ran across the street and grabbed his car hopped into his truck or car and You wouldn't want to have somebody like that out there. No. You know, he dropped his gun, the AK-47. He left his gun. He left a uh, cameras behind, left a lot of things behind. So the agent did a fantastic job. The civilian did a phenomenal job. A woman. I mean, who would think you could take a thousand times like that? How many people would have the uh, brain power to follow him and Not take many. pictures of the back of his truck so that they end up getting and the key was the license. So. They got the license and 
after they had the license, you know, there's all sorts of technology where they can literally pinpoint where this truck is. I never knew something like that existed. And uh, they pinpointed him on the highway. They got him with a high speed chase. So they got him. It, it was amazing. So Secret Service did a great job. And I think I can say, honestly, the sheriff's office, law enforcement, everybody really did a great job. Incredible. I'm happy about that. That's incredible to hear. Thank you. And backup question um, to that second fold is, you know, this was a second attempt in your life yeah. in under two months. What do you make of that? Well, there's a lot of uh, rhetoric going right. on. A lot of people think that the Democrats, when they talk about uh, threat to democracy and all of this, mm -hmm. and it seems that both of these people were radical lefts. Uh, the first one, they should learn more about. They have... Uh, apps that they haven't opened yet, which is pretty strange. And uh, the father went out and got the biggest lawyer in the state of Pennsylvania, which is pretty strange about the father of the shooter we're talking about in Butler, the first one. And that's pretty strange. There are a couple of pretty strange things going on there. I can say this, the Secret Service was very brave in the sense that bullets were flying and they, when I went down, uh, I purposely went down, I saw what was happening and People are probably screaming. I'm not sure if I recognize that, but I went down in Secret Service. They were right there with bullets flying right mm -hmm. at them, and they weren't hit. But uh, three other people were, Corey, a firefighter, and two other gentlemen that who they thought died. And actually, the uh, doctors in Butler were unbelievable. They saved their lives. And we've actually raised a lot of money for the families and uh, the family of Corey and uh, the two gentlemen. And they both lived. They thought they were dead. I, the first thing I asked when I came up, I said, how many people are dead? Because we had a massive crowd. And with all those bullets flying, so three got hit. But there was a great display of, uh, brave, of, of bravery. I mean, it was incredible. Uh, normally, the crowd experts will tell you when they hear bullets, and we heard a lot of bullets going off. Right. Uh, a crowd would, this was a massive crowd. You couldn't even see the end of it in a big field. And that uh, the crowd always runs. They, they call it a stampede, like cattle. I mean, they, they stampede. And a lot of people get killed when they stampede. But they hear bullets, but nobody ran. They nobody, all stayed. You know, tens of thousands of people. Nobody ran. In fact, you can see it in the small group behind me. There was a group of probably a couple of hundred people behind me. And nobody ran. In fact, they're standing up. Some of them are standing up looking for the shooter. Uh, the other one uh, has to get uh, credit to local law enforcement. It was a gentleman that shimmied up to the roof, looked, saw the man with a gun and probably made him go faster than he would normally go. And so he didn't exactly hit the target the way he wanted. Uh, there's something going on. I mean, perhaps it's God wanting me to be president to save this country. Uh, nobody knows. But when I made the right turn, it's very unusual because the people weren't on the right. The people were standing out in front of me. When I turned my head at an exact 90 degree angle, the bullet came zooming by and, and clipped my ear. And uh, the reason so much blood, they, they told me at the hospital, I said, why so much? The ear is the bloodiest part of the body because of cartilage. He was giving right. me a whole description. I said, you don't have to tell me, but it was a mess. But uh, amazing bravery shown, uh, amazing talent, like the doctor saving the two. Right. The two men that were hit, they were hit really badly. I won't tell you exactly what happened, but they were hit badly. And uh, they both lived. Corey didn't make it. Uh, Corey was in bad shape. We had a uh, person from the National Guard, about 10 seats over from Corey, run to his aid, and with all of, he was hit in the head, with all of that, was giving a mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation because he was still alive. Wow. And people couldn't believe it. They thought it was such an incredible act. Who would do it? It would, you know, just an amazing thing. And we're going to take care of him, too, because it, it just, I mean, just the fact that he could do it and some other people. So it was uh, it was amazing bravery. And there was a mistake made, a bad mistake. That one building was unmanned on top. Very. And uh, that was a mistake. There's uh, nothing you can say about it. But uh, it was uh, that was some. That was some crazy day. And then uh, yesterday you had another one with a different result, actually, much better result because uh, we lost Corey and two, two gentlemen were very badly hurt, but they're, they're in pretty good shape now. Right. A lot of talent. Those local doctors up there had very. tremendous talent. Mm -hmm.